Let's talk about sex trafficking, human trafficking. There's a huge situation, not only here in the U.S. that's happening, um, the, the huge human trafficking issue in the U.S., bigger, a lot bigger issue in third world countries. Well, human yes. trafficking in general is a huge issue. Absolutely. Um, uh, the last estimate I saw was about 17,500 uh, slaves are brought in for the various industries into this country mm -hmm. each, each year. Um, and worldwide, there, there are more slaves today than there have been in any other point in human history. Why is that? Because it's, it's a, just an easy way to do business. You know, third world countries can just, you know, they, they round people up, they, they pay them, they do pay them like some sort of wage. Usually what it is is they're promised one wage, but then when they get there, their wage is like incredibly small. But then it's like one of those company store type deals where they have to pay back for certain things and they, they never end up making more than what they pay the company they work for. Mm -hmm. yeah, and people pay like huge fees to these, uh, basic, basically they're like headhunters, job placement people. Mm -hmm. um, they, pay these, they pay these fees, they, they pay for these visas, they get shipped over to the country in question and then they end up just being either completely enslaved or partially enslaved, you know. Um, there, was a, there was a tomato plant like somewhere in Florida that was doing that. They had armed guards. They would hire, they would hire women from overseas to work. Mm -hmm. They'd bring them in. They'd take their visas when they got here. They wouldn't let them leave the compound. Compound had barbed wire armed guards. They weren't allowed to go anywhere in town without an arm, without a chaperone, basically. Well, uh, this is similar to. There's a letter that a the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops wanted to bring up regarding the whole border issue. Well, there was a um, the immigration reform back in 2005, 2006 that was in talks of trying to fix um, the whole border issue. The Catholic bishops mentioned, sent a letter to the ha Chairman House Judiciary Committee, um, Mr. James Sinbrenner. And their statement to him was basically saying human trafficking is a modern day form of slavery. Victims of human trafficking are subject to force, fraud, and coercion for the purpose of sexual exploitation of forced labor. And examples of recent cases of human trafficking in the U.S. includes adolescents, Mexican um, girls trafficked in to the U.S. for forced prostitution. You've got Indian men trafficked for forced labor and African women and children trafficked for domestic servitude, among others. So we're pretty much estimating, the U.S. government is estimating approximately 600 to 800,000 people trafficked across international border each year and into the U.S. Of those trafficked in the United States, it is estimated one-third are children. Yeah, and as I mentioned before, that number is something like 17,500. But the, um, the, you know, the, the other thing with the, these trafficking rings, like... It, it, Last I checked, one of the U.S. attorneys was saying that Florida was like ground zero for modern day slavery in this country. Um, you know, the, the Florida agriculture is like number one in this country for, for human trafficking. Why do I not hear any of this in the mainstream media, in talk shows? Why do they not because discuss... People, because people want to pay less for food, less for clothes. Garment District in New York is another big slave district basically in this country. People don't want to pay extra for all these things. If people want to go to Walmart, they want to buy cheap stuff. They don't realize that going to Walmart, buying cheap stuff, buying cheap stuff anywhere really amounts to supporting slavery worldwide. Well, that, yeah. is, why, that is why I have not stepped foot in a Walmart for the past 11, 12 years just because of how they treat their employees all over the world, you know? Once they start treating their employees a little bit better, then I'll decide to walk into a Walmart and buy something. Yeah, I think a, if, you, if you Google it, there's a, there's a website where you can actually type in like the different stuff that you have, the different types of things that you buy, and it'll tell you exactly how many slaves you actually work for you. Oh shit. Yeah. yeah. Technology is so. another huge thing. Like you have the Foxconn yeah. plants in China. Uh, Didn't they have a recent riot? 
yeah. the employees they that had, are in China? They have a huge suicide problem. That's where they had to put these nets outside the buildings because when people tried to jump out the windows, they get caught in the nets and oh, they'd force them to keep gosh. working. Um, not to mention a lot of the stuff that goes into making these circuit boards comes from Africa. Like there's a lot of uh, mines where they farm like these rare minerals they use in circuitry. And, and this is still IT yeah, in Africa? The iPhones, iPhone, any computer chip has these has these minerals farmed out of the ground by little 10 year old kids. Then you've got the owner who is a billionaire yeah, Steve Jobs. Well, he's not just not Steve. <laughs> well, who is still the, he, yeah. he, he, who he wasn't is, that great of a guy if you think of it. In those who terms. is the billionaire that owns the uh, what is it? The contractors or the employees over in China that are making these products. There's, there's like, a billionaire. There's a, lot of them. there's a lot of them actually. There's a lot of. Different there's I, I, th I think we I think we refer to them now as shareholders. Oh. Yeah. Basically, everybody that has stock in Apple, Samsung, name any technology company, if you own stock in that shit, you're paying. But didn't that shit Apple down. go in and had an F as investigation done on this company that is abusing the employees? I hadn't that's, heard about that, but that's, they, that's only one end of it. Again, you still yeah. have the kids in Africa mining this shit out of the ground. Well, what do you think the solution is, fellas? Think in terms of rare earth minerals. It, 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 honestly, it's people actually need to wake up, and and we need to do a better job internationally dealing with this. Um, there, there's some treaties that are in the works. Maybe they'll help. Maybe they'll help a little. Maybe they'll help a lot. There are a lot of charitable organizations that you can donate to that that deal with these issues. Um, but I mean, I can tell you stories. There, there was a guy who uh, paid a, a coyote to bring him into the U.S. A coyote is one of the you know, basically somebody. Who you know, transports people from Mexico to the United States. Um, illegally. Illegally, yeah. yes. So uh, he gets the guy, basically what he would do is he would get the guy and then he would just drop him off in the middle of the desert with a 20 ounce bottle, bottle of water. Well, here you go. I've already got all your money. I'm leaving. You're here in the desert. Good luck. So what happens is somebody else comes along conveniently and they say, well, yeah, I'll, I'll get you out of here. I'll give you some water. I'll get you out of here. Um, you just have to pay me uh, like seventeen hundred dollars or something like that, or so, you know, mm -hmm. some some amount of money that she just doesn't have. So of course the person agrees because he's dying of thirst in the desert. So what do they do? They drive him to uh, Florida, and they sell him to a farmer. Basically, oh my gosh. they sell the money that this person quote unquote owes that person. So the the farmer then buys it, buys the debt, in a, in essence buys the person, locks them up in a trailer with a bunch of other people. And then they even have, like, have the windows nailed so that they'll only open like so, so much. And they're like chained into this place. And it wasn't until a uh, pastor had heard that there were people and he just wanted to get more people to his church. So he went out there to talk to these people. He sees how they're living, realizes they're slaves. He reports it. Yeah, help, it helped uh, break up that. Uh, Good, because not a, a lot of people, they're, they're so busy in their their lives that they, they see something that's going on. They just don't speak up or don't say anything. They just continue on. I mean, a, a woman could be getting raped in this building and they see it and they just keep going. You know, well, it's like the, it's like it's not our business, or I don't want to get involved, or whatever. And it's like here she is screaming for help to get this ass off of her, and they just people that just hears the screaming just walk on by. A lot of the time, though, that uh, things like that, people, especially like slave labor, they fear you know retaliation. I mean, it happens a lot. Oh, cr huge crime organizations like that, you know, you get one of them arrested, you got a hundred of a hundred more of them coming to hunt you and your family down. So, well, well here there are were, there were there were some Russian women who were recruited to work at a resort hotel here in Florida. They they were flown in, um, and again, first thing they do, they take their visas, and then they uh, they shipped them to uh, Detroit. Uh, oddly. Enough. They they put them on a bus to Detroit, and uh, they had them working as strippers. Um, they weren't paying them. 
they were taking their tips. They were they were keeping them locked up. They had them all like living in the same one room hotel right. motel room. And um, it was actually one of the customers of the strip club that reported it because one of the the strippers actually, uh, you know, who was who didn't come here to be a stripper. She wasn't a stripper by choice. Right, right. Um, but yeah, she is one of one of the one of the girls confided in one of the the clientele, and uh, he reported it. So they, good for him. Eleven facts. I got this from do something dot org. There are facts on human trafficking, and one of them is forcing victims into prostitution, subjecting victims to slavery or involuntary servitude, compelling victims to commit sex acts for the purpose of creating pornography. 19% 19 are involved in labor exploitation, 80% of trafficking involves sexual exploitation, and there are 27 million slaves around the world. That's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to the United States to have that many slaves and and these horrible situations happen to human beings, not only um, immigrants, but... The State Department now has a website. Um, well, it's actually on the State Department website. There's information there on, on uh, what different countries are doing to improve this situation and what countries are not doing anything to improve mm -hmm. or have gotten worse. And so. speaking of other countries, I was born in the Philippines, a country that I love so dearly, and they have a huge human trafficking situation there. And I would love more than anything for the leaders of that country to do something about it. As long as they're so. not getting paid for it, they'll, they, they might do something about it. If they're getting greased and, you know, well, greed is a powerful motivation. Uh -huh. I just don't know how these people can sleep at night. Uh, they, have, they have pills for that. Yeah. And large piles of money <laughs> to go stare at when they're feeling down. Well, yeah. anyway. The Philippine government was placed in Tier 2 in the 2011 U.S. Department of State's Trafficking in Persons Report for not fully complying with well, the Trafficking Victims Protections Act. I Minimum report, standards actually. for the elim elimination of trafficking but making significant efforts to do so. Here, I thought it was completely unprepared for this. I actually read that report. Good. <laughs> but uh, human, human trafficking is one of those uh, pet causes of mine. Mine too. Yeah. Yeah, it's a... Oh. I All better right. move on because I'm getting pissed. Well, I would like to uh, relate one last story. Sure. You know, cause th this, is to, this to me is an important story because it, it shows that, that human trafficking isn't always what you think it is. And it's important that when you see things that just don't add up to go ahead and report them. There was a girl, um, an Egyptian girl, who was brought over by an Egyptian family. Um, she was, they, t they said she was a cousin or something. She lived there supposedly as their daughter. You know, she slept in the garage. She, didn't, she wasn't allowed to go to school. She, um, she did all the housework. You know, it wasn't unusual for the neighbors to, like, see her like standing on a chair doing dishes at like 12 at midnight so i mean she was there to work she was a slave she was basically their house slave and um when they got caught then they went to court and it was because one of the neighbors finally said hey, you know there's something going on there so you know child family services went there of course the girl didn't want to say anything because you know she had always been told, well, you know, if, yeah. if you say anything, they'll just send you back to Egypt. You know, and she came from very poor conditions there. Mm -hmm. But um, so what happened was like they, as a defense, they produced these tickets for Disney, for Disneyland. Said, look, we, we didn't, she wasn't our slave. We took her to Disneyland. But, you know, when they took her to Disneyland, she was there to carry all the bags. She wasn't allowed to go on any of the rides. Can you imagine being an eight-year-old girl being taken to Disneyland for the first time and you basically just have to carry everybody's stuff around and watch the other kids go on the rides? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> she was given citizenship. Um, uh, she's gotten educated. She's, uh, I think, in college now. Good for her. Um, the the 
patriarch of the family went to jail you know, for for slavery, basically. Yeah. So the laws against that. She, I think he got like two years. Two years, really? And then they were deported. The woman was deported. And the sad follow-up to the story was, you know, rich woman in Egypt has another little girl there now. So, didn't learn any kind of lesson. Just left this country, had a slave in another. But it's important when you see things that just don't add up. You know, especially when you're talking about children, just pay attention and if, if something feels wrong, err on the side of caution and call someone and report it. Well, the thing is that what bothers me is human beings on a daily basis, they just go about their way and just don't even acknowledge other people. And so how would they know if, how would they know to be observant if a, a, a observe a, a a human being that's standing next to them or a child that's standing next to them that could be in okay. trouble. <clears throat> Good example here is, one, if you're at Disneyland or Disney World or an amusement park and you see, happen to see that one kid is just not allowed to go on all the rides, she's just like carrying all this stuff that normally parents would carry, that's, that's a sign. That's when okay. you pick up your damn iPhone or your whatever phone. That's made by and... starving kids in Africa. And okay, scratch that. <laughs> scratch that. Well, go to a pay phone. Go to a pay phone. <laughs> yeah, Call there are less slaves slaves involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the um, but the other thing is like uh, this was a gated community that these people were living. This is an upper class gated community, mm -hmm. and their neighbors would occasionally see this little girl at midnight doing chores or you know doing you know like they'd see her from the kitchen window doing dishes and I'm like that that's a red flag right there yeah who has like a six seven eight year old girl doing dishes at midnight what parent does that so obviously there were there was something wrong there eventually one of the neighbors just had enough and and just looked at it and said oh, i've got to call somebody something's wrong something yeah. is wrong absolutely and when you see something like that that's when something that's that wrong it's a good idea to pick up the phone and say something you know, uh, the Department of State website is a good place to go for information as to what signs to look for and who to call. Uh, the same is true of a lot of the, if you Google human, human trafficking, there, there will be a lot of uh, charitable organizations that pop up and you can go through them and it'll, again, they'll list the type of signs to look for. You know, if something's that suspicious, go ahead and go for it. Yes, and if you could also please go check out do-something.org, that would be great. Okay, um, let's go ahead and can, can you uh, give us a refill? <laughs>